They claim that Gaza is an open-air prison. I don't know many prisons that carry this much military equipment yeah. that is meant to be used against civilians. The October 7 attacks on Israel exposed a sophisticated and well-funded international array of weapons that was used by Hamas on that tragic day. These weapons, often funded and smuggled from various countries, including Iran, Russia, and North Korea, were used primarily to target Israeli civilians and carry out atrocities against them. I'm Eir Pinto, and this is my state, a program about current events, my belief in God, and my journey in the Holy Land. And all these weapons you see around me were confiscated from Hamas terrorists who attacked Israel on the 7th of October. And this is just a fraction of what they have in the Gaza Strip. Since Israel's ground operation of the Gaza Strip, the IDF has seized countless weapons, money, and other equipment which they found in underground tunnels, personal homes, schools, hospitals, and other places throughout the Gaza Strip. Today, we arrived at the warehouse in Tzrifin to meet with the IDF collection unit and check out some of the weapons that were confiscated from Hamas. My name is Zidane Shalom Ketler. I am Reserve Deputy Commander of a unit that is in charge of seizing enemy equipment from the battlefield. So we have uh, many different reasons to, to confiscate enemy, enemy equipment. The first and probably the most important ones, we want to be able to protect our soldiers better against the equipment that uh, our enemies are using. The second reason is it is important to learn how they're using their equipment, where to look for them and how to hit those uh, specific uh, points with as little casualties that are uh, non-involved as, as we can. So you have like lots of warehouses? I'm, I'm curious to see everything that you collected so far. So we will not show you the amount since uh, to be able to do that we will be standing in a five ton of explosive material. But what we will see is examples of each and every kind of weapon that we've seen on October 7th and after that in Gaza. So what you see here is uh, four examples of those uh, pickup trucks uh, that entered Israel carrying uh, terrorists on them. You can see bullet holes in the doors and yeah. uh, on the seats. But some of the damage is also because uh, when the IDF entered the area, we needed to clear the roads fast. So yeah. they were just spread to the sides of the road and turned over. This tractor here uh, is not the one that you've seen on the videos. That, Breaking the fence. Yeah, it broke the fence near uh, Kibbutz Erez and entered Israel. It was attacked with heavy weapons and stopped there. So those are uh, four examples of the motorcycles that enter Israel on October 7th. We captured many of those. Those are Far East uh, manufacturers of uh, motorcycles. None of these are being imported into Israel. It's either an allowed import or a smuggle. I've seen it from the videos of like the Nova party that some hostages exactly. like, like Noah were like, kidnapped on the back of On the back of those, yes. So yeah, here, what you can see here is examples of the equipment that we mm -hmm. uh, brought after October 7th fr from within Israel. The terrorists came in with this stuff. For example, the AKs. We see here many different manufacturers. We mm -hmm. see the Egyptians, the Ukrainians, Romanian, Bulgarian, Chinese, uh, North Korean. This shows a good example of uh, black market. This is the AK-103. This is a, a very good assault rifle. It's the, the newest kind of, uh, of uh, AK. Another uh, distinguished example from October 7th is the AK-74U, also called the Micro or Bin Laden. A bit smaller? It is not a bit, it is, uh, it is smaller. But they came prepared. They came prepared and they kept the ammunition simple on an assault, you want to keep the ammunition simple. These are the RPGs, right? Yes. So this fires a, a rocket. Yes, right? this fires it's a shoulder it. Held. Yes, they fired it on houses. They fired this on the ambulance near the Nova. When this one was uh, made in 1976, and this mark here marks the original Russian factory. Mm -hmm. You can see from many different manufacturers. This one is made in Gaza, and you can see in the manufacturing the difference. This is a pipe that comes from a signpost. They cut it. There is no difference diameter in the middle. They don't care about the shoulder of the terrorist that will launch the rocket. And they just attach the trigger mechanism with uh, screws. But the thing is that it works. 
Some of those are shotguns, you can see different kinds, and uh, sniper rifles. If you've seen a video of uh, soldiers taking a rifle out of a teddy bear doll. Mm -hmm. yes. So this is yeah. the specific piece. Yeah. This is a dragon of sniper rifle. Uh, it fires 762 long bullets. This is crazy. It's all the weapons that I remember being uh, warned against when we entered uh, Khan Yunus and the Gaza Strip. These, and especially because I'm from the tank unit, so especially the RPGs, the RPGs. they would just pop out of an underground tunnel and fire an RPG at us and then uh, sneak back sneak. into the tunnel. Most of them were, you know, we got them either the next day or, or the same. destroy the tunnel. This is a light machine gun, the original ones from Russia. We see the Chinese copy and we also see the Iranian copy. This is the assault drum that they use with the uh, bullet chain. On October 7th, they came with huge amounts of ammunition. Also in the Gaza Strip, everywhere you look. Everywhere. Every, basically every school, every United Nations buildings, every mosque, every place that is supposed to be humanitarian, we found lots of uh, ammunition and, and guns packed with, with all these uh, weapons. So what do we have here? You know, this, this looks like plastic. This cannot fire any any bullets. True, we found those in schools. So this is what they educate their kids on. We found those in three different schools inside Gaza. In uh, military practice, uh, explosive charges is not an assault weapon. This is something that you use once you capture there an area and you want to defend it. Those explosive charges yes. came into Israel on October 7th. So this suggests that they plan to capture the Israeli communities and stay there. And stay there. The black big ones are called the Shawaz. This is anti-tank charges. This yeah. is not something that you need. Yeah, just, just to just carry to... out a terror attack. Exactly. Yeah. The terrorists were armed with military-grade weapons like the Shawaz anti-tank explosive, which was used to break into Israeli civilians' protected shelters and safe rooms. This is a man-launched rocket launcher. Mm -hmm. It has its own tripod. This is homemade, for example, look at the tripod. It has just construction uh, metal. On top of it, there is a, a car lift, and it is all used with uh, tear-ups and strings. This was not used on October 7th. We found it in different places inside Gaza. From this Gaza? is used from a window to attack uh, infantry or tanks oh, that go in the, yeah, face to face, yes. Guys, just take a look at this. It's like you created in the craft school or something. So this is a very old uh, machine gun. It was meant to be anti-aircraft, uh, but in practice they use it to fire on everything that they see. It could be our vehicles, tanks, and infantry. And we even found one of those mounted on a pickup truck that yes. entered Israel on October 7th. Wow. What we see here, these are the actual the warheads, right? This is what explodes. So this is filled with uh, thermobaric explosives. Once it explodes, uh, it raises the, the temperature to 3,000 degrees. Oh, wow. It incinerates everything, and it creates constant pressure on the foundation of buildings. So this is to be used inside uh, uh, rooms or inside uh, closed vehicles. Thermobaric grenades, it was used in houses and civilian cars at the Nova Music Festival to incinerate everything and everyone in their vicinity. Now, this was made specifically against the Mer Merkava 4 main battle tank. It's a magnetic charge that you, you see uh, magnets here. So it uh, attached to the tank. So they want to attach it to the tank, and it will hit the ammunition box of the tank and from the, the tank inside. from the inside. Exactly. This is state-level intelligence yes. that was used against us, against our main battle tank. We captured many of those on civilian cars in the Nova parking area attached to the fuel tanks of the cars. Really? Many of those didn't explode. Some of those still had a safety ring on them. We knew about this charge before October 7th. And once we captured them, we brought them to the intelligence unit that are in charge of, uh, of analysis. And the first tanks that entered Gaza for the maneuver already had a countermeasure. Yeah. So those doesn't work anymore. This rocket here is Iranian made. They create both warheads in Iran and uh, they attached a North Korean rocket engine. So these are made in Gaza. But it's not actually made in Gaza. They assembled, assembled in, it Gaza. in Gaza. So yeah. Smuggled into the Gaza Strip and then assembled yeah, because... underground in their factories or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. This box is controlling rocket launchers that launch rockets into Israel. Mm -hmm. And once you programmed it, you can just leave. It will fire in three weeks at 8.06 p.m. as you programmed it. It doesn't need anything. So guys, you need to understand that 
Hamas's agenda is to keep firing rockets at Israeli civilians throughout this war. They care about it more than protecting their people, more than protecting their fighters, their uh, terrorists in the Gaza Strip. So that's why they invest all this technology that will keep firing rockets even without personnel on the ground. This is a copy of the Austrian Steyr sniper mm -hmm. rifle that is made in Iran and they smuggle it into Gaza. This is a heavy sniper rifle, which means it is not an assault sniper rifle. They, they use the stationary uh, positions. Mm -hmm. So they fired from within Gaza into our military compound mainly mm -hmm. on October 7th. This is a, a suicide drone. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it a V-tail because of okay. the shape of, uh, shape of the V, the tail, of the yeah. tail. Um, it is uh, made in Gaza. We saw evidence to at least four of those crashing inside our military bases on, on October 7th. You see all the amount of weapons that are around me? Does this look like an organization that seeks peace and does not want to destroy Israel? Just think about it. This is an amount of weapons that can serve a military. This is not even a percent of what Israel collected from within the Gaza Strip. And even more, it is not even a percent of what we collected after October 7th inside Israel. Take, for example, the AK-47s. We have here 30, 40 AK-47s. We collected hundreds inside Israel after October 7th. Each and every terrorist that we uh, killed or captured carried at least one knife, many types of knives. You can see kitchen knives, you can see commando knives, and you can even see homemade knives. Yeah. The flag underneath those knives is uh, uh, the flag of Islamic Jihad. There is a map of Israel mm -hmm. and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, guns and fists. Some of us would like to talk and think about the two-state solution. Yeah. There are no two states here. There is only one state, yeah. so we might be talking about the two-state solution. Nobody else is. And uh, the whole heart of their goal is Jerusalem. Yes. This kit is uh, a legitimate kit that is used to train on medical procedures on babies. If you want to learn how to treat a baby, you will use this kit. This one came from inside Gaza, from inside a tunnel. This kit, a very specific plan to be used on Israeli kidnapped babies. And we still have the baby being held in the Gaza Strip. Yep. So yeah, you just look around you. I don't know any different uh, uh, definition to crimes against humanity. Clearly, all of this arsenal and other finds is the result of extensive smuggling operations into Gaza from various countries involving substantial financial investments and years of planning. Imagine if all of these resources were put into improving the lives of Gazan civilians instead of being used for one goal only, the destruction of Israel. Please pray for an end to Hamas and all terror organizations around the world who are hell-bent on destruction and chaos. Pray for a world without war for our children and their children to live in. But while we have to fight this axis of evil, we pray for our soldiers for the soldiers of the IDF, for the return of our hostages, and of course, we unite in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.